Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another what's for dinner video. I have some really fun recipes to share with you guys, some new ones and some classic family favorites. I hope you enjoy, I hope you will subscribe if you haven't already. I post these videos every week when I can. So without further ado, let's get into what's for dinner. So the first thing I wanted to share with you guys was this recipe for a flank steak marinade. So for this marinade, it takes one half cup of olive oil, one third cup of soy sauce or Bragg's liquid aminos, a fourth a cup of balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons of lemon juice, two tablespoons of brown sugar, one and a half tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, one tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, a teaspoon each of paprika, pepper, dill weed, and red pepper flakes, half a teaspoon each of oregano, rosemary, and coriander. Then after you combine this mixture, you want to reserve two tablespoons for after cooking, and then you're going to pour the rest over your flank steak and allow it to marinate for 2 to 12 hours in the refrigerator. And I'm still mastering how to cook a flank steak, so if you have any suggestions, I'm open to them, but this marinade is delicious. I can tell you that much. Still working on the cooking technique, though. And that was that recipe. Now I'm going to move on to a shrimp and broccoli stir fry. Starting with the rice, I am just going to get the rice started cooking. And it's really how much rice you like. I like a lot of rice and I don't mind leftovers. So I did about a cup and a half there. For the sauce for this stir fry, I start with a fourth a cup of Bragg's liquid aminos or soy sauce, two tablespoons of dry sherry, one tablespoon of packed light brown sugar, one tablespoon of cornstarch, a tablespoon of vegetable oil, half a teaspoon of sesame oil. When that is mixed all together, put the frozen shrimp in a separate bowl and add two tablespoons of that mixture in with the frozen shrimp and kind of stir it around so that all of the shrimp is coated. Then I filled a large saucepan with about half an inch of water. I added the broccoli. I used frozen broccoli. You can use fresh broccoli, whatever you prefer. And you want to cook a couple of minutes until it is still crisp, but you know, not raw. Then you want to drain that broccoli and set that aside. Now I am slicing half of a medium yellow onion and I'm going to saute that in a separate pan until it is just translucent. There are definitely a lot of steps in this recipe. Once you get your head around it, it's not that big of a deal, but the first couple times I made this, it took me a while to like get my head around all of the steps and stuff, but it's really good. It's like to me, it tastes like homemade Chinese food that you would order from a Chinese restaurant, and I love that stuff. So I really love this recipe. It's worth it. It's just a tad complicated. Okay, back to this pan. I am adding about a tablespoon or two of olive oil, letting that heat up. And then I'm going to take the bowl with the frozen shrimp and that sauce and add that right into the pan. I'm going to stir the shrimp around and just cooking this about two to three minutes on its own. I just want it to start to maybe brown on the bottom, but I don't want it necessarily to get fully cooked because it's going to continue cooking as we add the rest of our ingredients and we don't want it to overcook. So two to three minutes and then we are going to add about a teaspoon of minced garlic and let that saute for a little bit. Then it's time to add the sautéed onions as well as the broccoli and the rest of the sauce that we mixed earlier. And let that sit in the saucepan, stir it to combine, kind of give it a few minutes to all heat up and combine and that sauce will thicken as it cooks and as it starts to cool after it's cooked, it will start to thicken. And like I said, this was delicious, an excellent recipe, I will definitely be making it again. Okay, now we are making a creamy tortellini soup. For this recipe, we need heavy whipping cream, Parmesan cheese, minced garlic, beef broth, 
some frozen spinach, a yellow onion, Italian seasoning, and some diced tomatoes. I also used a bit of salsa. All right, in a large saucepan, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of oil and the diced onion. Then I'm gonna add my frozen spinach. Now, my spinach is from my garden. I had blanched it and froze it in muffin tins. That's why it looks weird. Just wanted to let you know. Um, I'm also adding the minced garlic. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add the Italian seasoning as well as the beef broth. You could also use chicken broth if you would prefer or if you have that. And then I'm gonna add the diced tomatoes and salsa and cover that and let that all cook for a little bit. After that has cooked for a few minutes, I'm gonna add the frozen tortellini, cover it again and let that cook again until that gets soft. Then I'm gonna add three fourths cup, oh, I'm gonna try one to make sure it's done. Then I'm going to add a three fourths cup heavy cream and one half cup of Parmesan cheese. And then stir this all together and this was absolutely delicious this could be considered a meatless meal if your tortellini was just cheese stuff like mine was again you guys i feel like i have to let you know i am um i have my two month old in the sling so if you hear baby snores i apologize <laughs> i don't have any way to avoid that she is a snorer and she's attached to me so that's what we're dealing with sorry if you can hear that I hope you don't mind too much I think it's kind of precious but anyways that's what that sound is so that was it for this recipe like I said this was really good it's a really nice all-in-one dish with some spinach for the vegetables and some tomatoes and everything it was just a really good one all right, next I'm gonna share my recipe for butternut squash mac and cheese. Just looking at this makes me wanna make it again. This was so good. All right, so starting with the butternut squash. I cook my butternut squash in the crock pot basically like all day. So I will just stick it in the crock pot and cook it for like eight to 10 hours on low. This is actually, it was cooked the day before and I just stuck it in my fridge so that it's easy to handle and it's just, a lot easier to do it that way so that's how I did it this time um, and these are homegrown butter butternut squash from a friend's garden so I gotta love that and if you guys didn't know winter squash key is called winter squash because it keeps all winter so I got these in maybe like July or August and I'm just using them now so that is just something that I just love about food and growing our own food and mother nature etc but I won't get off on that anyways in the meantime I have some water boiling and I'm going to start cooking my macaroni noodles all right so I put all of that butternut squash into my blender I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of butter and I'm going to blend that up so in total you want about four tablespoons of butter three-fourths cup heavy cream and one cup of cheddar cheese. I kind of divided mine up based on the size of my blender, but eventually that's how much you want. After you blend all of that mixture up, that's your cheese mixture, gonna add the macaroni into the baking dish and add the cheese mixture on top. Just the best color, isn't it? So we mix that all around and then I flatten it out and add a little bit more cheese on top. If you have leftover butternut squash it freezes really well after it's been blended so I do have some of this cheese mixture in my freezer for the next time I want to make this which I'm thinking will be pretty soon then you pop that in the oven and I just fried up some smoked sausage to go along with this and that was our dinner really simple and easy and very very delicious Okay, next is a really fun recipe. I can't believe I haven't shared this with you guys yet. It is a potato and broccoli casserole. Super simple, but a huge family favorite. So as you can see, I have some potatoes boiling. They are yellow potatoes. And then I just cooked up some broccoli. I used frozen broccoli. Use whatever you like. Um, I'm gonna layer the frozen broccoli. I sprinkle some salt on there and about half a cup to a cup of cheese over the broccoli and 
then we're going to move on to prepping the mashed potatoes. So I like to make mashed potatoes with pretty much all the good stuff. So these are yellow potatoes. I have about a fourth a cup of butter, a bunch of sour cream, and also some milk or cream, whatever you prefer. And of course, salt and pepper. And I like to add sometimes a little bit of garlic powder as well. And then we just layer those mashed potatoes on top of the broccoli and cheese and spread it out, make it look pretty, add another layer of cheese, and that is literally it. Bake it in the oven. You don't have to bake it too long because everything's already cooked and pretty hot. Um, but, you know, bake it long enough to melt the cheese on top. And here you can see I cooked a beef roast in the crock pot. This was my side dish for that. Nothing really fancy about that. I just throw it in and cook it all day. Um, but I wanted to show you that that was what we also had. That was our side dish for <laughs> the main dish of our potato broccoli casserole. All right, the last recipe I have is my chicken tarragon leek soup. And I did a little bit of a different twist on this than I've done before. I didn't have celery, so I tr wanted to try using carrots. So using three to five medium carrots, one small yellow onion, one small leek or two really small leeks in my case. Um, you also want four to five medium chicken thighs, boneless, skinless is preferred, but if not, you can just take out the bones and the skin, as well as four to six cups of chicken broth and some cooking wine, white wine vinegar, heavy cream, salt and pepper, and of course, dried tarragon. So these leeks are from my garden. Believe it or not, they survived the winter and I just had to use them. I wanted to make sure I didn't waste them because it was just so cool that they survived the winter and were still growing. So, so this day I actually cooked my chicken thighs in the instant pot. That's a nice way to do it. They were frozen. It just took maybe like an hour or two to cook in the instant pot. So I'm taking out the cooked chicken thighs, shredding the meat, and then adding the juice from the instant pot as my start for the broth. Then I'm going to go ahead and add my chopped up veggies right into the slow cooker as well as my tarragon that is the main herb, the star of this soup if you will. This tarragon is also from the garden. It's a perennial. It's really easy to grow. It comes back every year. Huge hit. And then I'm also adding one and a fourth cups of white cooking wine, two tablespoons of white wine vinegar, and three-fourths cup of heavy cream. I'm going to stir that all together. You can add a little bit extra broth if you think it needs it, and then of course salt and pepper. I'm gonna cover that and let that cook for, you know, probably like four to six hours. Since the chicken's already cooked, you don't have to worry about that so much. It's just the veggies that we wanna get cooked. Um, there is another way you can do this with raw chicken, but I didn't uh, do that. I just pre-cooked my chicken to make it easier. So while that is cooking, I wanted to serve this with some bread. So I just got a loaf from our freezer. This is just like a dollar loaf from Walmart. I'm just pouring on some melted butter really, really easy and quick and throwing that in the oven. Here is the soup when it is done. This is one of our family favorite versions of chicken soup. It's a little bit of a twist on the classic chicken noodle soup. Um, but yes, this is delicious. I just served it with the toasted bread and a salad. And that was our meal for this night. And that is it for this What's for Dinner video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you next week in the next one. Thanks for watching.